Good morning, awake people of America and the world. <laughs> Marcus Conti reporting. I want to talk about this uh, WikiLeaks um, stir-up. And I want to talk about uh, the Jerome Corsi, uh, Roger Stone connection, if any. I feel like I, I read some comments <laughs> guys have beat me up over. I was critical or well, overly critical of... Uh, Roger Stone and Jerome Corsi, I want to correct the record on that. I mostly want to talk about that this is WikiLeaks reporting that uh, Ecuador government has refused Julian Assange's lawyers uh, access to him this weekend, right, to prepare for his U.S. court hearing on Tuesday, <laughs> right? And then they, they back it up with further details. Further details, the hearing is on Tuesday in the National Security Court Complex at Alexandria, Virginia, and is to remove the secrecy order on the U.S. charges against him. So this is WikiLeaks reporting. This is not secondhand or anything. WikiLeaks put this out via tweet. There it is, right? They keep updating it. Right? And I also want to talk about the, the potential where what what does it mean that Julian Assange is now um, being tried by U.S. courts? What does that? What exactly does that mean? So I want to talk about that and open the discussion to it. So this is I'm going to read from the New York Times because I want to show you. See the the thing the story of Julian Assange is a publisher who published information provided to him. In the two th leading up to the 2016 election, but mostly Julian Assange was revealing to the world the fact that the Democratic Party, the Democratic National uh, Committee, was rigging an election for Hillary Clinton against Bernie Sanders. Let's not forget that, okay? I know time passes, and now we all, you know, we want to support Trump, and but let's not forget. And let's not become our own spin masters like the New York Times. So let me look at the New York. I want to read the New York Times. I want to get the Jerome Corsi, Roger Stone angle out of the way. And then focus on what exactly the Julian Assange in court, right? Or his case in court. There's no confirmation that he's going to appear live, by the way. Just to clarify, there's no, WikiLeaks does not confirm that Julian Assange is in Virginia, will be in Virginia, might be in Virginia to, to all, it could be teleprompted. We don't know, right? Yes, he has fallen out of the, um, uh, the conversation over the last two months, but there is no confirmation that Julian Assange will appear in Virginia on Tuesday. All it is is a hearing to lift the, sec the, quote, secrecy charges. To remove the secrecy order regarding the charges, just to clarify. All right, so, so this is Jerome Corsi, and I want to talk about how the New York Times is spinning this story out of control, right? So I'm going to read a little bit, and you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. So this is uh, November 23rd, a few days ago. Jerome Corsi, a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> right, already. He's not a conspiracy theorist. He's a, he's a conservative guy, right? He's a conservative talk show guy, right, that supported Trump. That's what he is. So the, whenever you see conspiracy theory, they're already spinning it to discredit him. That's the New York Times, right? So conspiracy theorist and ally of the Trump campaign, Roger Stone, is in a plea negotiation with prosecutors working on the special, ca special counsel investigator investigation into Russian interference in 2016 election. All right, I want to clarify. Right, in in a, in my spoof video with a couple of videos ago, I I made the assumption that 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 they didn't take the Mueller investigation seriously. Now, I don't mean that it's a serious investigation. Mueller into something something real. What I meant was that it's 
it's serious in the sense that Mueller has authority, right? The Congress has given him authority to prosecute. That's what makes it very real and very scary. Is it a witch hunt? Absolutely. I'll read it to you now. A, a per, uh, see, the special counsel, Robert Mueller, and his team are trying to discover whether anyone connected with the Trump campaign knew of or cooperated with the Russian intelligence operatives who hacked the democratic systems and funneled the emails to WikiLeaks in, attempt, in an attempt to undercut Hillary Clinton's president, presidential campaign. Right? That's all spin. There's no truth or evidence to suggest that the Russians leaked, the Russians hacked the Democratic National Committee and leaked it to WikiLeaks. There's no evidence of that. That's purely the spin, which makes it very dangerous because it's gaslighting, and as, as time goes on, people are convinced that that is the actual story, which it is not the actual story. Because, again, we know that, that Hillary Clinton and the Democrats left themselves wide open, right? In, in, in James Comey's own words, the, the head of the FBI, that they were extremely careless and reckless protecting information, right? They, they operated on private servers and people's basements to circumvent, you know, the quid pro quo that they were doing, how they were funneling and, and um, laundering money, right? So, so the fact that the Times and Mueller could make these, this wild accusation that the Russians hacked, <laughs> you know, the DNC, when the DNC was so wide open and there were so many confederates within the DNC that saw the cheating and wanted to disclose it. And that's where we'll lead into Seth Rich. Was it Seth Rich the leak? We still don't know who the, the leak was. And it's very possible that, that Julian Assange himself might not know exactly who that leak was because of the double blind platform that WikiLeaks uses, which means you can dump information on WikiLeaks and and you and your 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 identity could be um, protected. I'm in the I'm in the deep weeds right now. I realize that, but I want to clarify. But WikiLeaks w would not have published it, published the Podesta emails and all of the dirt on that was being provided to them, unless they could have confirmed it. So it is very likely. And Julian Assange has alluded to the fact that Seth Rich could have been the leak in video deposition. He has said it, right? So here's where I want to get these two guys out of the way. Jer Jerome Corsi, although a nice guy, I don't believe he lied. I think it's just, it's leverage for Mueller to put it on the right. See, these guys identify themselves as right. And that's where they make the mistake. So Mueller is now trying to to say, oh, see, right wing conspiracy theorist. There he is, right here. Fucking, there he is. He's taking a plea. There he is, Nero, Jerome Corsi. He's the guy. Now, is it true? No. In the article, let me just read some more. A person familiar with the talk said that the prosecutors had presented Corsi with evidence that he had been untruthful with investigators. At, uh, investigators asked him whether he knew beforehand that WikiLeaks was going to publish emails stolen from the Democratic computers during the campaign. Everybody knew that, right? Let see. That's what that's what these gaslighters like Mueller try to fudge. Is that only Corsi and Stone knew about it? No, that was it was public record. You know, WikiLeaks had been warning all the time that they, as they had, see, they had had the DNC hacked stuff as early as July 2016. Right? They had it very early because that's when the DNC leak occurred. That's when, when Seth Rich or 
whoever it was, somebody inside of the DNC did a dump, whether some amateur hacked the, the DNC because it was so wide open, but or it could have been the, the, the angle with Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Imran Awan, that leak inside of Congress where, again, it was so wide open, right? It's not a big, it's not a big, you know, mystery, right? Guccifer and Guccifer 2 are figments of, the, of, of Robert Mueller's imagination, right? And th th look, there's so, much, there's so much to talk about, but I just, you know, in terms of how Mueller's team has covered up the actual evidence, the actual facts of what happened in 2016, where maybe a few brave souls leaked out information, right? But what didn't happen is Russian spies came in and stole Podesta's emails. That's, that's almost certainly what didn't happen. So in this article, right, and then I'll wrap up this, this part of it, and then I want to talk about Seth Rich, right, the, pos the possible angles. In this article in the New York Times, in Corsi's own words, and in Oliver Stone, uh, Oliver Stone, <laughs> fucking Roger Stone's own words, he had, they admit that they had secondhand information. What does that mean? It means that they, they had, they were, they were just parroting what everybody else already knew about what Julian Assange was about to reveal, right? Everybody knew it, but here's where, here's where, here's where what you have to understand about that time. There is no way, no fucking way on earth that DNC Confederates, guys like Seth Rich, who were Bernie Sanders supporters. Right, and they had they did not want Trump to win, they wanted Bernie Sanders to win. Understand that that it is not, it is the, the guys that like Stone and Corsi. Why I'm critical of them is because they're hijacking the story, trying to make you believe, right? Or maybe they believe it themselves that Julian Assange was trying to get Trump elected. No. Julian Assange was trying to get to the truth behind the corruption in the DNC and how Hillary Clinton and Podesta and working in collusion with the media, how they were hatcheting Bernie Sanders using a Pied Piper strategy to elevate Trump because they thought if they challenged Trump, it was an easy win. And they miscalculated that. But, but understand where it's coming from, that there is no way a guy like Seth Rich would have handed that kind of information to a guy like Jerome Corsi or Roger Stone. Those would have been the last people on earth that Democratic, you know, these Bernie Sanders guys would have given it to. Is it likely that they would have given it to WikiLeaks, a neutral party? Absolutely. Right? Did, did Jerome Corsi and Roger Stone have anything to do with any leak? Hell fucking no. They were just, they were just parroting, parroting away. So, let me talk about that. So, that leads us to, that leads us to Julian Assange, who on Tuesday will be, his case will be facing the music. Now, did he, do, what, what is Julian Assange, by the way? Is Julian Assange a traitor? Is Julian, sorry, is Julian Assange someone who um, stole anything? Stole secrets? No, Julian Assange is what's called a publisher, a publisher. That's all Julian Assange is. No more so than CNN or MSNBC or Marcus Conti, <laughs> right? He's just a publisher. He's someone who takes the information and puts it out into the public. That's all he is. And the idea that the United States government is prosecuting a man like that is disgraceful, despicable, is a, a violation of 
you know, United States law, right? So that, that also brings up the point that if Julian Assange is actually brought to the U.S., it would be to his advantage in this case because, because he's on U.S. soil, he would then have rights under the Constitution, First Amendment rights, right? Freedom of speech would kick in, right? That's mostly why they probably have not allowed him into the country, right? That's one of the, that's 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 part of the reason. But see, what Assange does, what Assange represents, is a total debunking of the Russian narrative that the Democratic Party ran with for two years. The lie that the Russians came in and hacked the election, when all along it was the incompetence and blundering of the Democratic Party who cheated and lied and laundered money and, and mishandled classified data. That's the story. And Julian Assange represents the possibility of revealing that story to the world. Right? And Mr. Assange needs to get off his fucking high horse about protecting, you know, you know, sources, because that's bullshit. Seth Rich, according to the record, is dead. But there's no evidence of a body. <laughs> right? We never saw the body. There's no police report. There's no autopsy. You see how with Jen Moore, we got an autopsy? It's a real body. You see how easy it was? Well, you just pay 100 bucks and you can see it. Seth Rich is nothing. Why? Because he ain't dead! <laughs> well, he ain't dead in the way they said he was. Right? He's disappeared. Hi, Seth. Hi, Marcus from America. Hi, how's Israel? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Stop by sometime. Drop me an email, we'll talk. Right? Is he dead? Who knows? But, but are you dead, <laughs> Seth? So, that's the story with Julian Assange. It is rather interesting, and it is a, a rather climatical that the Sanders people, the people who supported, and, and fuck you about socialism, and fuck you about un-American and all that bullshit, okay? Because that's not what this subject is about, you fucking idiots. <laughs> Let's say that. Oh, God, these are socialists! It has something to do with that. It has to do with, with American values of supporting a candidate and if the people want that candidate to win, that that candidate should win and not be cheated. That's what this is about, for me anyway, for this reporter. For you, it might be about some other bogus ideology about, you know, capitalism and, and, and corporate might. I fundamentally disagree. I believe that the capitalist system has topped out and you have what's called monopoly, right? And that the American people require a new deal to reset the economy in favor of the people and not the 1%. That's, that's by no definition socialism. The socialism that you're talking about where the Russians created this story about socialism and the Americans created this story about socialism for completely different reasons. So that, that argument is fucking ridiculous, right? Or, oh, Conti, you want the, you want the country to be Venezuela? <laughs> I always say Venezuela. You gonna eat your dog? You gonna eat your pets? They're eating their pets? No. It's a totally different economy. It's a totally different system. It has nothing to do with universal single payer health care for all, <laughs> college tuition, raise the corporate tax rate so that people can, can breathe again, and they're not working five jobs for, for, for 10 cents. So, so those are the reasons why we're interested in Julian Assange. Right? You're interested because you're trying to prove that the great Trump is right. In all his thinking, the magical, mystical Trump, the man, the big man in the White House is right. And everybody else is wrong. And then there's those of us who just want the truth. We just want to know that that we were cheated. That's all. 
we want to we want confirmation that we were cheated and that our government cheated us that's what we're really about that's why that's certainly why I continue because I was cheated in in my own personal experience challenging judicial where I saw the courts rigged where I saw the 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 corruption and how scary it is when you present evidence that it's not considered presented evidence to courts and it not can not be considered because of because of the ramification of that evidence the consequence of that evidence to others or the establishment and that's precisely what we have here on a grand scale and Julian Assange who happens not to be an American is forever we are forever in debt forever grateful to Mr. Assange for what he did for not only the United States but for the the idea of a free press the idea of real democracy and not tyranny and not Gestapo type behavior with special counsels that come in and prosecute above and beyond and around the Constitution of the United States of America right so that's why Assange is important that's why the lifting of secrecy in his case is critical and essential and that it's not a conspiracy within the right whatever that means Corsi and Jerome and Stone who did this this was this was a couple of brave souls likely inside of the DNC who released this information and forever affected Demo uh, forever affected the political discourse the 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 path of America it is unlikely that Trump would have ever been elected if it weren't for the 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 constant smear the constant revelations that WikiLeaks was providing to us leading up to that election and it is very likely that if truth prevailed Sanders would have beat Clinton and Sanders would have beat Trump and that is just a motherfucking fact my name is Marcus Conti reporting